Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna show you some long exposure shots I've taken and give you some tips about how you should take yours. And I'll do that through explaining the thought process behind each picture I'm gonna show you. So the first shot, let's just go back and start off with the highway edits. How about that? So I took this first shot when I was making a short film that I released on my YouTube channel. I'll link for it below. But so I was taking some time-lapse video of the highway here and I thought it might be a good opportunity to take some long exposure and just kind of experiment with all that. And this first one, I had to make sure, you know, to take account for that one, it was super cold outside, so I needed to be strategic with how I was gonna do this because, you know, I didn't wanna like freeze to death out there. And also I needed to make sure to experiment a little bit, but just have some, like take some knowledge I've already had and just apply it without experimenting too much because you have limited amount of sunlight. And I wanted to get the sunset in the background and make sure that I could get that rich yellowish orange color and how it kind of fades into some of the, the reds because I want to bring that up in post, which I did here. So what I had to do was turn down my f-stop so I have to make it really tiny. So it was like at f20, f22 or something. So my f-stop was pretty small. So I made my f-stop pretty tiny because I wanted to compensate for having a long shutter speed. So my shutter was, I think I had a shutter of like 20 seconds for this. So I was able to get lines of light from the cars driving by because it was such a long exposure. But I was also able to get pretty balanced shots because my aperture was so tiny. What you don't want to do is have an aperture of like 1.4 because this image would be super bright and it'd probably just be like a it would probably just be like a white screen. So yeah, you wanna always make sure that you're balancing out your aperture with your shutter. So if you have like a really slow shutter, like I did here, you wanna make sure that your aperture is gonna be tiny because you're already gonna have a lot of light coming in. If you're also wondering what I'm looking at on my laptop right here. This is of course an edited picture. So the original picture was a little overexposed and that's fine. I'd honestly rather have it be a little overexposed this picture is all about the light. So it's gonna be a little overexposed because it's a long exposure and I wanted really dark areas and really bright areas, and which I got, you know, like if you look on the sides, you see stuff, but it's darker because most of the focus is on the highway. And I really like that. And I think it just makes it look like a sci-fi-esque picture in my opinion. You know, I just really like the color scheme. I like how I made the, the sky, that kind of, that tint of blue mixed in with the, like the red and some yellows and oranges and it kind of complements the reddish orange lights and I appreciate that the fence here is, is blurry and it makes it look like I'm actually like you're actually staring out at the highway and it looks like a comic book to me so I love comic books so this makes sense that I do something like this but you know what's fun with long exposures is you can really it's up to you to make the shot the way you want to make it you could have had like a shorter shutter speed and you could have adjusted your aperture a little bit to change the picture completely and again you know, it's just fun to get out there and try new things with your camera. So this is something I really highly recommend you try out because long exposures are really cool and they are a very big part of photography, especially if you're just starting out or you just want to expand on your portfolio of landscapes. This is something you should try to do, especially if you want to really get more motion in your pictures, you should really try some long exposures. Also make sure that you're highly caffeinated so that you can be a little anxious on the photo shoot so you really have a lot of pressure to get the best shot ever. All right, kidding. All right, we're gonna move on to, this is a second edit of the first picture I showed you just now. Um, what I like about this one though, is how I was able to make it look a little more dramatic because I really brought down a lot of the blacks. I made a lot of the colors stick out better. Like the, uh, a lot of the lights, the blurred lights, from the cars look even that much more epic to me. And the sunset in the background looks that much better. But this is of course all subjective. So if you have a different opinion about these shots and you tell me, you tell me you don't like them. But I know you're gonna tell me that you do like them. So I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Moving on. So we're gonna move on to our actual second shot here. All right, I like this one a lot. This, this shot actually grew on me quite a bit. So this shot, 
I think, honestly, it's a little more reserved. It's less experimental, but I think it's like a more standard shot that I think you should try. The fence, as you can see, is more in focus, but it's still a little blurred. The main focus is still on the highway, and those, the lights from the cars look very, very sharp, and I, I really like that. The, uh, yeah, the red lights look very crisp, and so do the uh, yellow lights on the left there. The sky is pretty cool too. I'm not sure why, but that yellow light in the back, in the sky, it just kind of bugs me and it doesn't look bad, but but that's why I like the first shot more the the yellows look better It's more of just a subjective thing But that color yellow does match the yellows on the left side of the highway from the the cars So with that I, I actually think it works and I do like how the shot is framed If you look your you know your vanishing point there is in the back and it looks like it's engaging It's cool. I just kind of like how it looks like it's like this light is like Spreading out it's kind of cool Cool. like it's it's the light is spreading out to one side of the picture the fence adds a nice layer to it and yeah I like the shot a lot I, I you know it's I mainly did the same thing I did from the first shot you have to make sure that your shutter and your aperture are well balanced with each other and also the time that you have to get these shots when you're worrying about the sunset is so small like I was going against time here like I <laughs> I maybe had I maybe 20 minutes or a half hour to get these long exposures and also the time lapses because it was about to be dark out and I really wanted to capture that sunset and I did but you have to just be on top of your game because you could miss it. A good rule of thumb is to take one shot with settings that you think will work right off the bat and your second shot should be re refined settings from the first shot. Like learn from that first shot and adjust the settings for the second shot. Your third shot should be the one that you're happy with and then you go home and you edit and you post on Instagram and you're happy and you get a bunch of likes. You get like a million likes. That doesn't always happen, all right? but. But yeah, I really like this shot. Um, do I like it more than the first one? I don't know. But this does look like a pretty nice picture. It looks crisp for some reason. I just like the angle of it. I like the angle that the lights are coming at the viewer. Okay, we're gonna move on to our next shot. So this picture was taken at my university and it was taken probably at 3 a.m. All right, why was I up at 3 a.m.? Because I knew nobody was gonna be around on campus and I knew I could walk around without anybody watching or staring at me uh, besides some of the deer. So there were a lot of deer out when I was taking these pictures that were just kind of wandering around staring at me like, what is this guy doing out here? He shouldn't be out here this late. That's what the deer were thinking. They're all staring at me like, dude, go to sleep. And I'm there with my headphones in taking pictures at 3 a.m. looking like a fool. This one right here, it's of the art building on campus. And yes, it's not perfect. I'm, I'm just gonna say it right now. Like if you look in the sky, the stars are not that crisp, they're blurry. And that's fine, like I'll, I'll take it for now. If I could go back, I'd probably try to fix it or might go, but I do like how crisp the building is. The building looks really cool in my opinion. It looks like it's in very high detail. And the tree right next to the building also looks pretty nice, pretty crisp. And the light looks pretty cool, how it kind of bounces off of the tree and it makes it kind of yellow on one side and more green on the other. I think it looks cool. Yes, I think the building, something looks off. I think maybe I could have re-edited the left side of the picture to make it less overexposed. But for what I was able to do at 3 a.m., I, I, I like it. I could have, you know, maybe I go back out, I could take the same picture and do it better. Who knows? So what do you guys think about this one? If you have any advice for this picture, you can let me know. I had a pretty long exposure, and that could also be why the stars in the sky were kind of blurry because like, sorry, but like we, the stars in the sky are gonna be a little blurry if your exposure is pretty long, which mine was. So it's, it's hard to kind of combat that. I could have, if I had to go back, I would probably have taken this picture a couple times and cut the pictures together. I'd have one shot, like the bottom half of the picture, like with the, like with the building and the tree, that part of the picture would be the same. I'd probably keep that long exposure and a, a tiny aperture to make sure it was really well lit. And then I would probably make the, for the second shot for the sky, I would maybe make the aperture a little bigger so I could probably capture more light, but I'd also have to make the shutter speed shorter so that I'd get less blur. Maybe I'll go back out sometime this year and take some more night pictures and see how I do. But 
Overall, I think for just taking the picture and then doing some simple edits to it, I'm happy with it. So for this next picture here, I had a small aperture, but a long shutter speed. So I was able to run into the shot with my phone light and run around like a crazy maniac. And I was able to get those random lines of light and kind of play around with it. So like your, your camera picks that up and it's just really fun. Since it was a long exposure, the light was so bright, it was able to stick onto the camera while my body was not really, I was moving too fast to be able to get caught by the camera. So, and it was also dark out. So gotta take that into consideration. Yeah, so yes, this is fun. I recommend taking your phone light and running around in your shot and letting just the exposure capture all the light and just see what kind of fun pictures you can come up with. It's fun, I love messing with light in my pictures, like these are really enjoyable. If I were to do this again though, I would probably make my aperture a little bigger so that I could make the shot overall a little brighter without having to go into post and artificially making the picture brighter myself. So that way I'd be able to avoid grain. This picture was taken at the music hall on my campus. So with this picture, I didn't really care about looking at my aperture too much. I just focused on my shutter speed. I made sure my shutter was maybe at 15 seconds, 20 20 seconds, just pretty long, right? And I took my phone and turned on the light and I ran around this hallway with my phone's light just going crazy and just, you know, spun it around in my hand and I was able to get, capture all the, all the cool light movements that I was making. So I was still able to keep my body out of the picture because I was just moving too fast myself. But my light was so extreme and just moving slowly enough that it was, that my camera was able to capture it. So yes, this is fun. I recommend, you know, you can do a lot. I've seen a lot of cool pictures with moving lights and stuff and people make some pretty cool pictures. So take your phone, turn on its light like I'm doing now and you can kind of just move it around. Like if I was taking a long exposure, it would capture all that light and it'd make like a complete circle out of my light. You wanna make sure that your aperture is kind of small because you don't want to have your shot be too overexposed. It's okay if your exposure is a little too much because you can always bring it down in post, but you wanna make sure you do as much as you can on the camera by making the aperture a little smaller. All right, moving on. This is the last picture. It isn't, again, if I were to do this again, I'd do it a lot differently, oh my gosh. This one's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> in this picture, I was trying to be super still while I moved the light around my face and everything. It didn't work at all. I should also turn off the light. So in this shot, I was trying to be super still like this and do this. But what happens when you try to do that? You yourself look blurry because you're mostly still, but there's still movement and the light works. Like I was able to get the light moving around, moving across my body, but I was still moving ever so subtly and I just look completely blurry. <laughs> So if I were to do it again, I'd probably just, I don't know, mix two images together or something. I might just throw like a mannequin in the shot next time I do this. So, but yeah, um, you know, it's fun to experiment with long exposures because there's a lot you can do. And I love being able to capture movement in photography. So I think even playing with light in your pictures is a cool way to capture movement and motion. This coffee is cold now because I've been filming so long. Oh. It's like having an iced coffee without the ice. Who does that? Okay, to be fair though, McDonald's and like Starbucks, they put in way too much ice and you get so little actual coffee. So it just, there's just, just, anyways. So there you have it. Those are some crazy long exposure shots that I have taken myself. I know, hold the applause. I know how good I am, but um, like I was saying, it is really fun to just try out long exposures and experiment because it's a really cool part of photography. So here are the main points I want you to take away from the video. One, have fun with what you're doing. Two, remember it's a learning process and to educate yourself with aperture and shutter speed. Take notes of things that work and don't work on your shoots. Just make sure you are learning. And another big element is to make sure that you have a tripod. And with your tripod, you wanna make sure that you keep your camera so secure on that tripod that there's no movement when you press the shutter. So that when you take a picture, your entire image isn't blurry when you press the shutter because you have like a long shutter speed. You wanna make sure that you don't have a blurry image. Tip number four, you wanna make sure that you set a timer on your camera. You wanna make sure your camera has a few seconds to stabilize 
so there's no blurriness once you press the shutter. So with your camera's tripod and a self timer, you know, like of like two seconds or 10 seconds, your camera should take very crisp, long exposures. I really cannot stress how important it is to have a self timer and a tripod. They're two like the most important takeaways from this entire thing. Another important tip is to always know your surroundings. Remember, you know, if you're shooting on private property, make sure that you get permission. And if you feel like you might be in an unsafe environment, then maybe you shouldn't take pictures there. And also, depending on the situation, maybe go with a group of people. Another very important tip is to have fun editing the pictures when you're done for the day. Go into editing and have fun. And you should also maybe take a day, like finish editing for the day and then come back to the pictures the next day to see if you really like the edits. You basically have another set of eyes. So thank you guys for watching yet again. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment down below. I'll answer it you know, I'll get back to everybody. And I can also make some other videos going more in depth with some topics as well. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.